I never thought that I would use any other note-taking tool other than Obsidian or anything. But since then, I have found out about this tool called Affine. And I have to say, this tool seems to mimic the way I collect and parse knowledge in my mind perfectly. And it also seems like to me that someone has taken all the things I like about any type of Obsidian. And all the things I want from any type of obsidian and put them in one single app. So this is the site for affine.pro. This is a dot .pro site. And we can click this download button and download this app. I have already downloaded it. And if we go to the pricing tab, we can see that much like obsidian and any type, it is free to use. It is stored locally. and even in the free plan, there is 10 GB of cloud storage available for us. And we can log in with three devices and have three members or workspace. Although the maximum file size that can be uploaded at one time is 10 megabytes. This increases if we go to the pro tier. Theme star is still being worked on. And like any type of obsidian, the file is working on adding some posting the find already has an AI which can help us search our notes and rearrange it in different ways, like summarizing our notes and changing tones and checking spelling and grammar and auto sorting and auto tagging, which is a huge time saver and sometimes helps us find new connections that we did not know there were. The pricing is also very reasonable. It's six point seven five dollars per month, so for a year it will be eighty one dollars. But the thing is that Affine AI has a separate billing of $8 a month, which is billed annually. So even if we are not on the pro plan, we can enjoy Affine AI, which will pay $106 per year. And this can only be paid annually. There are no monthly plans for the Affine. But I am all in the completely free plan. I am neither using AI nor using the pro features, but I already love Affine. The main reason for my love for Refine is this feature, which is currently not available in any type and will take a long time for them to implement. This is this canvas feature. We can write freehand here, change color and draw. This is also pressure sensitive, as you can see. And the most awesome thing is that we can turn the things that we write here into a document just by clicking this button. So we can go from ideation to a document format without any hassle at all. This is a complete game changer for me because usually I just write down, jot down ideas in a canvas and then connect those ideas in a coherent and logical manner and then write them down on a doc. And now I don't have to do this at all. It just happens automatically. And if you're thinking that the images or pictures you draw or add here, how will you get those back into the note? Well, that is pretty easy. All you have to do is create a frame. You can do that by clicking here and deciding the ratio of the frame, but that's not necessary. You can just click and drag here and we get these options and we can, we can just click the frame button. Now that's a very big frame. We can resize it like this. And then we get this insert into page option. So if we click this and then go back into the doc, we can see that the handwritten section within the frame has been inserted into the document. This saves an insane amount of time for me because this is how I usually work. I have to work in two different apps where one has a canvas and another where I rearrange and type down what I have drawn. So it just seems like a miraculous app for me. Now, one thing to notice is that the words that we write in the canvas will show up in the doc only if they're inside this blue box. To find this blue box, we can click these arrow keys here and click this note option. Then we can see there are a lot of options here including adding images and adding links to other documents and creating an attachment from our system storage. But if we just move our cursor out of this area, 
we get this blue box called note. And if we click and drag, we can make these boxes. And then I can click and drag it to position it as I want. And next thing is that these arrows. We can click this arrow button and change the thickness of the arrows. Choose if they're going to be wavy and curved or angular and curved or straight and arrow-like. And then create an arrow from one of the objects in the canvas to another. To keep doing this, you can click this button again. Or you can click the object you're trying to connect. And then click this button here, and this creates a connector, which you can use to join with one of the other objects in the canvas. Another thing to notice is that in order to join the nodes with other elements, like handwritten elements or drawn elements in the canvas, we have to first put this element inside a frame. Now I'm going to delete this by clicking this three dot menu, scrolling down and delete. So if I click this frame option and put this drawing inside a frame, then I'm going to click this, take the connector and join it here. And to make it a little more beautiful, I'm going to click this elbow connector and this is going to remove the connector from top of this node. Now, another thing that is not present in any type is this journal section. So this is one of those apps that urges us to write a daily note every day. And then there is a way to automatically add these to particular sections. And that is this collection section. Collection are a group of folders that automatically collect different docs based on rules that are dependent on properties and tags. And here are the tags. When you first open the app, don't worry if this tags portion is not here. As we add the tags, the tag section will appear. So let's say we want a collection to collect all the tasks that we have. So we make a collection called tasks. And we can set some rules to automatically collect some portions of our dog in this collection. But that is not all we can do. We can also manually add objects to this task collection. We are not only limited to adding objects through rules. So I'm going to click save and we get this page. We're going to go to add rules and we're going to add a filter. We're going to choose tags and choose contains all. And we're going to go to this empty portion and choose one of the tags. Now I don't have a task tag created yet. So I'm going to click save here and create a tag called Cast by clicking this tags drop down and clicking this plus button and creating a tag called tasks. Now I want to go back to the tasks collection, edit collection, and then go to the empty option. And now there is the tasks option. Click and every dog that has the tasks tag on it will appear here. I'm going to click save. And that's it. Now, there is another way to organize our notes, which is this organize option. Here we can make folders and place documents within those folders according to topics. Now, another thing that I have been missing in any type is this tab option. We can create multiple tabs and work on multiple things at once. With this, we can have two things open and use one as reference and write notes in another. There is also an option to open two documents side by side in split screen. For this, we'll go to this three dots menu and find this open in split view option. And there are two documents side by side. Scroll up and find this blue line. And this is not really visible here, but we know that we have reached the blue line if the cursor turns into this hand icon. Click. And we get this menu and then click close. Now we can also embed links in our documents. As you can see, I have embedded a video from YouTube right in here. Now there is a way, just like in Notion and also in AnyType, to add properties, which AnyType calls relations. By clicking this button here, 
we can see the tags is a default property that is added to every document. And this is also what we're using currently to create filters and add rules for our collection. We can also add other properties. And these properties can also be used as filters for adding documents automatically to collections. You can go to the create property and these are the four things that are available. The checkboxes, dates, number, and text. Now about the command prompt, you can click anywhere to bring up the cursor, click forward slash, and then we can find this pop-up, which tells us the types of editing and actions that we can perform within this documentation. We can choose some of the points that we have written and turn this into a database. We can have table view or Kanban. Here's the Kanban view, or we can add another view called this table view. We can add tags or other properties. There is also an option to name this table. From here, I'd like to say another thing, which is linking a particular block. So this is a block inside a find. I can highlight it and then Turn it into a linked document. We get the option to choose a name for the document. And this test link doc has become a new document. We can double click this to open it. And this blog and with the indented content within it has become a new document. Another thing that I want to emphasize is that there is an option to embed a document inside another, which is not present in any type at the moment. Here is the embed view where this document, where the contents of this document is visible inside this document. So I turn it into card view, then it looks like this. I'm going to change it back to embed view, and here it is. Here there is also this bidirectional link option, which shows all the backlinks and the outgoing links. From the document that we are in. Another thing is importing your knowledge base from other apps. So we can already import from Notion, import HTML files, or import Markdown. So both Obsidian and Notion users can quite readily use this app. Now for the only thing that is keeping me from using a fine full time is that at the time of making this video, I cannot choose a default location for storing the data in Affine. And since Affine is an app that is stored locally, there is a heavy burden on my C drive. But I have been reading the community posts in Affine, and it seems that they are moving towards creating a way for users to change the default storage location for Affine. There is no calendar view. There is only the weekly view here and the option to go to today. Maybe they will add a calendar view later so we can navigate from month to month instead of navigating from day to day within a week. But of course, you can just search the date that we're looking for or the name of the document that we're searching and find it from here. The one thing that I can nitpick about the differences between any type and FI is that any type, of course, has a universal graph which shows all the objects that are present within any type. Now, if we're wondering about the FI AI, we can access it from here. Also, we can use this button here to access the AI features of FI. So, if you're like me and you like to collect information, and then connect them to make a logical connection between them and then turn them into a document, then I will honestly recommend checking a fine out. I know there is something that it can offer to the planning and execution of the work that you are doing. I plan on making a more detailed video about the features and use cases of Affine along with the users of any type and see how they compare. I hope this has been helpful to you. Have a good day. See you soon.